Welcome to the Higher Self Podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to help you unravel anything keeping you from a life of true abundance, joy, and happiness, which is your birthright. Each week, we'll bring in different guests specifically tailored to help you on your journey to discovering your higher self, whether it's spirituality, business, finances, health, or relationships, there are no topics that are off limits. So get ready and enjoy this week's episode of The Higher Self. Welcome to this week's episode of The Higher Self. Guys, um, this is an honor for me. This is a magical moment for me because I can remember back when I was, gosh, building my business and wanting to to create, you know, what I wanted to create. And I, I, I didn't have an example. I didn't have an example of what was possible in life as a, you know, like as a, as a minority, you know, mm -hmm. who was poor, uh, and, and, and who just had a dream to do something great in life. And, um, Caesar Milan, you were that example for me, mm. you know, you really were. Thank and, you. And I'm so excited to have this conversation with you because to me, you are the epitome on planet earth of a human being that if you are ready to change your life, if you are ready to create magic from your life, and now if you're ready to heal that life, you did it. And anything that one person can do, anybody else can do. So welcome to. to Thank you. Yourself. My pleasure and also an honor. And I will welcome you into my land, the magical land. And you know, let's really talk is. about whatever you want. And, and definitely looking forward to inspire people. Yeah. Right. Definitely uh, to, to show people that anything is possible, literally, you know, a anything is possible. I, so you can ask me whatever you want. Let's do it. And I'm just an open book. Let's and, do it. I, I want to help. My show is called Better Human, Better Dog. But the mission is better human, better planet. Yes. Right. So that that to me is says everything. Right. So we just have to make sure the human uses everything he's born with. Right. Anything, everything he's born with. And I come from a low income, uh, you know, poverty. And so what we have, what we learn is we learn to have faith. Right. We learn um, right or wrong. We use the word faith. Right. But that to me connect me to belief, to believe that someone outside of me is going to help me, especially if my mom and my dad are not around, right? So that gave me a lot of comfort. That gave me a lot of uh, motivation. That gave me a, a lot of security. Mm. And they did it such a great job, right? Because my grandmother would, would take me to church or she would read the Bible. However they did it, they really kept my spirit, you know, my my, my spirituality. And then, of course, uh, my father is, is, a, is a hardworking man, so I learned the integrity of of hard work and they, whatever you want, they, whatever you want, you have to go do it. Yeah. It's part of it. So you have to believe in yourself, but then you have to go do it. Mm. Right. And then it, it, it makes, it helps when what you're doing, you're passionate about it. And I'm passionate about dogs. Right. I'm passionate about animals. I'm passionate about mother nature. So it was easy for me. Right. And then uh, growing up poor as, as well, poor, with money, not poor spiritually, not poor instinctually, right. not poor, you know, uh, emotionally or, or creative. So my creativity was was really good, right? It was it was uh, I was able to to create things, and that's why the uh, the, the uh, I I learned when I came to America is the power of attraction or or, or uh, create whatever you want. And here is here they talk a lot about wealth, right? So it's all about wealth, right? money, wealth. And to me, it was it was about created my dream right I, I was i wanted to be the best dog trainer in the world and that's something that i needed to create i saw it in my mind but how i was going to become that that's the journey and that's what i want to know what i want to know is you know so many people they stop at the obstacle mm -hmm. and yet you had every obstacle <laughs> in your way right literally and the literally, border too the, the border <laughs> i want to start there the border you had to cross into this country illegally illegally, yes, illegally. and yet some people you know I, I i invite them to you know come to awaken and we're in dallas and they're in like houston and they say oh i'll come when you go to houston right. because they they allow everything to stop them right. right take us back to that moment at the border what was that like for you how old were you when you crossed into the country so i'm gonna go a little bit back so i was 21 december 23rd and I, the next day was going to be Christmas, and I'm in Culiacán, Sinaloa. And so that's another border that I have to cross, you know, because over there you can get killed. Or, in Sinaloa. Or, yeah. 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 Or, or uh, 
or, uh, or, or the temptation of all that money and all that power that the narcos have, uh, uh, you can be tempted. So that's another thing that uh, kids like me, uh, I, many of my friends die because they join, right? And so thanks to my mother, uh, is, uh, she, had, she had me extremely well trained, right? Because whatever she said, I do, right? Come surrender to a woman. And, and so December 20, 20, uh, 23rd, I'm 21 years old, a voice comes and says, uh, you need to leave. And that was, that was, I was waiting to be 21, so my mom can let me go. Uh, that was the only thing that was holding me back, right? I, w- I wanted to do earlier, but you know, no, you're not old enough, you're not old enough, you're not old enough, okay? 21 is old enough. Mm. And so 21, uh, I, uh, the boys come said, you have to leave, you have to leave right now. So my mom calls my dad and he said, you know, your son is leaving on the van. Where is he going? He said, he's going to America. No, he's going to El Norte, as he lays him. And so my dad gave me his life savings, which is $100. Wow. That's right. So I only had money for the bus and the $100 that my dad gave me. And so I put the $100 between my sock and my foot, right? And then I'm going. That's it. Grab the bus, arrive to Tijuana many hours later, and I immediately go to the border. That was it. And then for two weeks, my job was to cross the border. Somehow. Somehow. And I did it every day, but they catch me all the time. Okay, wait a minute. Time out. So you would cross the border. Yeah. They would catch you. Yeah. And then they would send you back. Yeah. And then you That's all repeat you all over. And so you didn't go the coyote route. You did it by yourself. I did the coyote route later when I when I was just caught, you know, caught for two weeks. Right. But, you know, for two weeks I get caught because I wanted to, I didn't want to spend money in the coyote. Mm-hmm. Coyotes don't, are not free. Yeah. Right. So the only hundred dollars that I had or the only money that I have, uh, it was in my foot. Right. Right. And that's it. So, so I wanted to save it. So when I cross, I have money to eat. Right. That was the logic. Sure. Right. So every single day I was, I cross in the morning, I cross in the afternoon, I cross at nighttime. I will watch the coyotes, you know, how they do it. And it's a group of people, you know, it takes, and, uh, and they don't like it when you follow them cause you're not paying them, right. you know? So I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just a kid and, uh, trying to, trying to get to the other side, but you know, I don't want to spend the money. So I get caught left and right. One thing that I do appreciate about, uh, the immigration of America is they feed you. Right. So often I will let them catch me just to eat <laughs> and they will give you a sandwich with a Coke. Right. That's it. Right. But the Mexicans don't feed you. <laughs> the Mexican police don't feed you. Uh, it's actually the worst. Right. So that's one thing I'm very grateful of the Im- immigration of America. Um, and that's it. So for two weeks. That's, so Christmas, I spend it at the border and New Year's, I spend it at the border. And I'm 21. So all the dangers you can think of. The border is the most dangerous place you can think of, right? The uh, American immigration try to catch you, and this and and the, the cartels trying to recruit you. Right. You know they can sell you for parts. The people they just you know drugs they can just hurt you. Hey, you come here. You're gonna help. For no reason. I'm, I'm by myself. You know what I mean? So, but but I never felt fear. Never felt fear. I always felt protected. Always. I felt hunger, right? But not starving. And I would go two, three days. They call it fasting. I was just hungry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Here, I now I fast, right? But before it's just fasting. It means we have no food. Right. So we did it at a, at a necessity, right? So at the border, you fast a lot. <laughs> so if everybody wants to learn how to fast, just go to the go border. To the border. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. I, I spent it uh, two weeks. Then... You know, the moment that I was, I was um, uh, finally going to cross the border, a coyote guy comes, right? After two weeks, he comes, skinny guy, dirty, he was smoking a joint. And he say, you want to cross the border? Yeah. I charge you $100, right? And it's, hmm, how do you know I have $100? And then the voice comes up, he's the one. Right. This is way before I did ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? yes. So I've been, I, I have heard the voice four times now. The first one, I'm going to go a little bit back when I was 13, when, I, when, when the voice says, say you want to be the best doctor in the world. And I was going to a judo competition. My mom always took me to the competitions. Right. So I said it to my mom, and that's why my mom, you can be whatever you want. Right. As long as I wouldn't be a, a, a 
drug dealer of the cartel because that's that was very permanent to me right and then and then the the voice comes and i say he's the one so the guy not only helped me cross the border once we crossed the border the guy said i'm gonna get you a taxi and and he's gonna take you to san diego downtown i don't know where none, none of that was i say i don't have any more money i'm giving you all my money the guy paid the taxi twenty dollars so the guy only make eighty dollars. So when I so when I wrote my first book, I, I I put it as the angels that you can see. So he was my first angel that I saw, because he he had charged me a hundred dollars. Then he pays for the taxi. Right. Right. Two weeks later, and the voice says he's the one, but he's skinny, right? And and Mexico skinny persons are are are, are not healthy back in that time. So not to be trusted, dirty, and smoking a joint. So three things that my mom tells me not to be friends with. <laughs> and this guy is going to help me cross the border. But I trust, like the trust that I felt was incredible. And the voice says, he's the one. Hmm. So that's it, trust. I never hesitate not to trust the voice. Right? And that's it. And then I cross, the taxi takes me, and I, I arrive in Chula Vista, and that became my home. So I was homeless for two months. And, and, and Chula Vista, and, and I learned uh, the sentence, do you have application for work? That was the first sentence. Do you have application for That's work? right. That's exactly the first word I learned, and I live under a bridge. That's right. Yeah. So I didn't feel like a homeless. I feel more like a, 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 a backpacker. You know, I, I, didn't feel, I didn't feel alone. I didn't feel nothing. I just felt I did it, mm. right? I did it. Uh, what I, what, what I want to do, I'm doing it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. Yeah. But it feels good. So I'm very focused on the feeling, which for me is, is, is everything, <laughs> right? Because with a, with a dog, I just have to have the feeling and then everything uh, it, um, unfolds. Unfolds. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you can bring a dog that is aggressive. I never met them, but I feel that I can help them. And then the rest, it just comes out. Right. So that's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same feeling. I, I feel the same with humans. Yeah. Which I'm sure you do as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just, it's energy. That's it. And then, and it's the feeling of trusting anything, right? You're literally trusting anything and everything, but you don't know what it is. Yeah. You just know that trust is what you're feeling. That's right. Right? So that, I hold to that. I hold to the trust. Because for me, the trust comes from, from my spirit, right? So that's my belief, right? So, so if I feel in trust, that means my spirit is telling me that I'm, I'm right. Right. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm right. Yeah. And then and then it's the execution of, of the body. So then I go into the instinct, right? And then I'm very respectful to instincts. And then I know I, I can guide or I can follow or I can create happy or lucky. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's exactly the energy that I now see. Wow, I felt all of that, right? I felt all this calm surrender. I felt happy or lucky and I felt calm, confident, unknowingly. Mm. But, I, but it's something that we all have. Right? That's, that's something that, that every human being have. We all born with it. It's that intuition. And it's also on the spiritual side. It's, it's our spirit guides that are, that are guiding us. You know? Mis abuelos. Yeah. You know? It's to, all the, uh, the belief system. As you know, the Mexicans, we believe in the day of the death. Right. So to us, you know, death is part of life. Right? So we surrender to death. So I'm not afraid of death. Right. Which is really good. I really enjoy that part of me and the part that I grew up with because we celebrate death. Yeah. And we see death all the time. Yeah. You know, especially where I'm from. So for me, I was very comfortable with death. So that alone, that's it. I don't have to worry about it. A lot of people don't want to die. Right. It's just like, when you're going to die, just don't think about it. Just think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Just celebrate death. Uh, you know, use happy go lucky energy or use calm surrender energy, but don't try to control death because there's no way in the world. Yeah. Right. Just celebrate it. So if you've been listening to my podcast for a while, you'll know that I'm a strong believer and advocate for plant medicine and its ability to awaken and heal the mind, body, and soul. It's a belief that is deeply rooted in my own personal experience with both ayahuasca and psilocybin mushrooms. And many of you for years have always asked me, you know, Danny, where do I go? Who can I trust? And there is only one place I would ever recommend or put my name behind, and that is Reunion. 
Reunion is a place where you could set yourself free from whatever is holding you back from living the life of your dreams. It's a beachfront, beautiful property that is in Costa Rica. And what I love about it is that it's not for profit. And this is the only thing that they focus on is the preservation and the safe utilization of these beautiful, wonderful medicines. And I only feel comfortable putting my name behind it because I am personal friends and have journeyed with some of the members of the facilitating team. Guys, I'm honored to have aligned myself with them to create the Higher Self Scholarship Fund. It's a fund whose purpose is in helping people who don't have the means to experience these medicines and yet have the desire to. And every time one of you books a retreat with Reunion, $100 from every booking is going to go into this fund and we will be sharing this money with people on a monthly and bi-monthly basis. So help me help others by using the code Danny Reunion when you go to register to experience your own life transformational journey. To find out more, go to reunionexperience.org and get ready. So tell me this. So you get here. Yeah. How do you start training dogs? How, how, how did that, what was the first dog that you trained? Well, first I was a kennel, kennel boy. Okay. Right? So they call you a kennel boy. <laughs> and uh, it's the guy who's in charge of cleaning all the poop and feeding the dogs after they close the, the, uh, the, uh, the kennel. Okay. So after, you know, after being in, um, in San Diego for a little while, uh, um, two ladies gave me a job as a groomer, right? And that's where I took my first shower in America on a, on a dog bathed up. Wow. Yeah. How many weeks after getting here? Uh, about a month. About a month later, right? A month later because I'm working in Sizzler. I'm working, working in um, Roberto's Burritos. <laughs> Just sweeping, you know, sweeping. And I, I remember... Uh, I only have to make one dollar so I can buy two hot dogs for 99 cents. <laughs> that was it. So really, I, I survive with a dollar a day. That's all I have to make. But in America, they pay you more. Yeah. Right? So but a dollar was plenty to me. Yeah. Two hot dogs, 7-Eleven or AM, PM. And then I discovered the big gulp, right? So you buy it once, and that's the best investment because you refill as much as you want. And you know, in Latin America, that stuff, that stuff would not work because people will, will go refill and sell it outside. Yeah, that's right. That's so right. those people will break. Right. You hear people are honest, so you just go refill whatever, and that's it. So that I will, I will carry my big gulp everywhere, mm -hmm. right? So, so that was it. So I don't have to make money for for water, or for drinking. I just have to make one dollar a day. So these ladies gave me a job, and uh, and as a groomer, right? So that's when I I went and they say, hey, do you have application? Every day I will go and say, do you have application for work? And they will give you temporary, right? And especially as a dishwasher. And so these ladies had a. a a cocker spaniel in the back that was aggressive. And so after they realized that I don't speak English, they show me the dog. It's a beautiful too, because those ladies are also part of the book when I say the angels that you can see, right? So I, so they show me the dog. I see what they're doing wrong, instinctually. I see what they're doing wrong. And then I go in the back, grab the dog and begin to groom it and the dog relax. And the ladies were amazed about it. And I did a, I did a good job. So that day they paid me $60. Wow. Six from making a dollar, five dollars a day. $60 I made. Uh, to me, it was a lot of money. I'm just seeing hot dogs. You know what I mean? It's, right. it's just a lot of hot dogs. Maybe a burrito. Just, maybe a burrito, maybe. right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, it's, it was amazing. And, and so then, then they find out that I was homeless and they let me stay in their place. I, I think it's a very important because it's people along the way, they're there to help you. Yeah. You know, a, a coyote guy, the, the two groomers ladies, you know, I, I took a shower in a dog bathtub. What a symbolic uh, moment for me, you know, to, to take a shower with dog shampoo. <laughs> you know what I mean? On a dog, on a, bath, on a bathtub for dogs. And I was happy. I was freaking happy. You know, I just, I, I, I love the freeways of America. You know, four, four, um, four lines. I never seen so many lines. Yeah. You know, and as well groom everything. I was just, I was just in heaven, you know. And so, so those ladies really gave me, gave me that opportunity. I came back and, and then uh, uh, I came back every day to the point that I made a thousand dollars. So now you're rich. <laughs> now you're practically yeah. rich, yeah. right? But now I have to cross another border, which is San Isidro. So Tijuana is one, and then San Isidro is another one. And that one you can only cross it in a bus or a car. So you have to know when they're not stopping people. So and then I became friends, you know, people, people in the street. And I, one day they, 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 uh, they came to me and said, Cesar, 
no están parando gente ahorita. Nobody's stopping uh, the, the immigration. Uh, so I went back, gave them the keys, and went to the uh, Greyhound, Greyhound uh, station, and then took the bus and just... And that's when I land in, in, in LA, LA, Skid Row at that time. It was the Greyhound station with a Skid Row. That's the first time I saw all these people around me uh, uh, doing drugs. I seen drug cartel, but I never seen people doing drugs, you know, at that level, like really street level. So and then I go to the Yellow Pages, right? And, and, and I start looking for kennels. By then I already knew a little bit about the culture, uh -huh. where to look for things. So I went to the Yellow Pages, look, kennel. And, and the guy who answered was a, a Cuban guy. And he said, yeah, vente para acá, estamos en Gardena, we're in Gardena, and, and see what you can do. And of course, I want to work, and I know, and, and when you have it, you have it. And so they gave me a job as a, as a kennel guy. And then from there, I began to, to, to unconsciously show people that I was able to put a pack of dogs. Because they're, they only keep them in kennels. Da, da, da. Right. And to me, it was weird. Why is this keeping the dogs in a kennel all this time? Put them together. Put, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I come from Mexico. So the dogs are loose. So I put them together and the owner will get up, uh, mad because I understand they can run away or they can fight with each other. But I not around you. Not no, around me. I didn't not know. You. Right. Right. I, I, just, I was just going to put the dog together and make them feel happy because they've been in the kennel for so long. That is what helped me with two main, main, uh, very important guys. One is Jay Real and the other one is is Ross. His name is was Ross, right? Those two guys saw me with the dog with their dogs, but I was not in charge of their dogs. There was a, a dog trainer was in charge of the dogs, but they saw how their dogs behave with me. Right. So one gave me a job as a, a watching uh, limousines. That's J Real. Okay. And then he uh, uh, also gave me an Astro van. A van. Una, una, van. Okay. Sí, sí, sí. And then he take he took me to the DMV to get a license. At that time, you don't you didn't need it papers. So that you, I would get a license. And Ross uh, uh, took me to his house and let me rent the back of it. The back in the back of his house there was a studio. That's how I landed in in, in Inglewood. Okay. And so and from Inglewood I would go to uh, Gardena to watch limos. And the guy Jay Rio, the guy who um, who did, who had the limos, he started bringing me clients. What, really? All his friends. And he said, you're going to charge $300 per dog. He, he taught you how to do the business, basically. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, he also taught me how to be on time. Because as you know, Latinos, we don't have a good habit on that. <laughs> That's what we can learn from the Germans. <laughs> Jen, is, Jen is laughing right now, by the way. Yes. She's really laughing. We don't have, yeah. it's like we don't. It's like we get there when we get there, right? Yeah. But it's not, <laughs> time is money. It's like, well, that's when you learn this. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Jay, Jay, Jay said, listen, if you keep coming late, I'm going to charge you $10 per minute. So I came late again and he charged me $100. Wow. Which is illegal. Yeah, but it's <laughs> now okay. I understand. But it's the, the best lesson. thing you did, Jay. Yes, that's the right. best thing, you, the best thing he did from that point on, freaking on time. Yeah, you know. And so uh, Jay gave me uh, the opportunity. I was making eight dollars and fifty cents an hour, and watching limos, and then making three hundred dollars per dog doing the obedience part because that's all I knew, right? And so, I, can I train dogs? Of course, I can train dogs, right? Uh, but but uh, for me, it was more the rehab later. So then from there, from there, uh, at one point, Jay said, "You know, you're done." You're done. You can't. Uh, you need to. You need to fly. You need to go. So I bought the. I bought the van, and of course I was scared because that's consistent money. Yeah. Right. And that's the first time I felt scared. Caesar, what you're sharing, it's so interesting. What you're sharing is the journey that every human being can take to becoming their ultimate highest self, to be, to be free, to be financially free, spiritually yes. free. We're, we're, this is, I'm, I'm noticing it. And everything that you're saying, you, it's parallel to any business, any desire, any anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So let's keep going here. So. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think the dogs can give you a good grounding mm -hmm. and a good sense of direction mm -hmm. and, a, and a good sense of realization. Who are you energetically? You know what I mean? Do you have the off-leash experience with your dog? Because yeah. that's, practically what you want with money right right to have this beautiful relationship with money or with your woman or with your children or with your business really you want to have this trust respect love everywhere that's right. everywhere everywhere that's right right you want to have this calm comfort love and joy energy you know and, and and whatever position in the pack you got to play sometimes you're a ceo sometimes you're not sometimes whatever you just have to be part of the pack mm. right and so for me that the the uh so when jay when jay says it's time for you to go um, 
I felt that, that he was um, lying to me, right? Because, oh man, did I did something wrong? No, he just literally felt genuinely that I was ready to, to start my own thing. Yeah, it's like when they pushed the birds <laughs> from the nest. I literally, he pushed me. The best, I know the best thing you did, Jay, right? So first thing you, uh, Jay gave me was the 850 an hour, the van, and then he take me to the DMV to get a driver license. And then he tells me about time, right? <laughs> right? And he, he, tell, he tells me how to charge, you know, all of that stuff. So I have no idea about it, right? And then I began to walk dogs. I stopped doing the dog training, right? I became a dog walker. Right? So that is what really created the, the America began to see, oh, it's a Mexican guy who walks a pack of dogs in Inglewood. That's before they called me the dog whisperer. They would call me the Mexican guy who walks a pack of dogs. Mexican <laughs> dog. <laughs> Right. Off leash. So right. that's that was they could, they couldn't. Understand. Oh wait a minute, time out. So right, off leash. Yes. All of them off leash. Yes. And they couldn't comprehend. Rottweilers, pit bulls, German shepherds, all getting along. Yes. Together, like now we have birds yes. and llamas exactly. and everything. Here. Yeah. This is something that I grew up with. Right. Right. And then and then I I began to do it in America. One thing that I didn't know about America is it is a leash law. So I didn't know I was breaking the law by walking a dog off leash. You see what I mean? I didn't know it was illegal. I didn't know it was illegal. We, we mentioned, because it, I even mentioned this to, to Jen, when we're in London, I am amazed that every dog is walking around without a leash. Yeah, right. I don't think I've ever seen a dog on a leash in London. It's weird. It's weird for, for uh, Americans to see uh, a, a, a dog of leash, which is the nature of it. Yeah. Right? You go to a third world country, the dogs are of leash, or you, go to, or you go to England, the dogs are of leash, right? It's, it's just a habit, it's a cultural habit, mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, so then I became the Mexican guy who walks a pack of dogs off leash. And, off leash. Right. I, you know, I, I always say I, I didn't know it was illegal to walk dogs off leash. I knew I was illegal, right? Because I didn't have, <laughs> I didn't have papers. So I knew I was illegal. I didn't know that in the land of the free it was illegal to walk dogs off leash. It just doesn't make any sense. And today, it does not make any sense. In the land of the free, dogs can walk off leash. Right. Right. It's the, it's the right of the right. of the of the dog to be off leash. Right. But I understand why they do it. But but most important, I understand because they don't have the right knowledge. So fear takes over. I right? was going to say the energy of fear. is Yeah. What, right. Fear takes over. And, and the absence of knowledge, fear, fear rises. Right. So and then so and then the people say, well, I don't want the dog to run away. I don't you know, want my dog to fight with other dogs, blah, blah, blah. But that's just fear because the dog knows what to do. Right. That's it. So so that that's how I became known. And that's really what what pushed what pushed everything else because, and then the LA Times uh, came to me and followed me around because by then, uh, Vin Diesel was my client, uh, Nicolas Cage was my client, right? All these incredible, Jada Pinkett was my client, Will Smith was my client. So all these, in, all these Hollywood people ca come to the hood, right? Get so, out of here. Yes, so because my first dog psychology center was in the hood, it was in South Central Los Angeles. Right. Uh, the Waldo Sanchez, but you know, can pass can say, he gave me the opportunity to, to be in this uh, parking lot that I turned into the first dog psychology center with trash and I had money. So I was, you know, I was just uh, hustling, but I wasn't charging a lot of money. I used mm -hmm. to charge $10 per dog for walking. Wow. That's what I did volume. So I will make good money for hundred dollars, you know, it's 40 dogs, but it's $10 per dog. Because your money psychology wasn't there yet. No, that's right at all. It, and that's something that I, I want to just share with our audience real fast. Please. That comes, that comes. The, the, the point that I hope you're understanding is that Caesar started, right? Yeah. Caesar started and he just started going. And, and, and so many of us, what happens is we stop ourselves from even starting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I did move my natural, simple, profound self. I didn't know anything about money, fame, and power. That came on its own. Right? Do I have the power to, to influence the world? Yes. Do I have money? Yes, I work for it. Do I'm famous? Yes. Do I look for it? No. It's just what comes. Right? So, so what I did push was my natural, simple, profound self. Right? Because that's, that's what I did have. And that's what we all have. That's right. Right? So, if, so, it's, so it doesn't matter if, if you come from poverty like me. It, that's actually better. Right. Because and then your faith or your hard work or your passion or your creativity has to be at 100. And the more 100 you behave, the faster you push. 
the more comfortable you get, the less, the slowest you push it. Yeah. Right. So to be hungry is is, is a blessing. It's a blessing. Of course, if you have everything, well, that's beautiful for you, no? But don't forget that you have to push it from the deepest part of you. Make sure that you give it 100%. Mm. I do believe there is such a thing of 100% human being. I do believe. Because I give it 100%. You know, 100 spirit, 100 yeah. instinct, yeah. 100 heart, 100 creativity. If everything here is 100%. Yeah. Co co coming from that place mm -hmm. right because otherwise how can i explain how i did this right i didn't grow up in money i didn't have money and you know i'm, I'm by myself in america <laughs> trying to become the best doctor in the world but who do i see at least the kids can see messi right <laughs> or ronaldo you you, you i couldn't see anybody it. nobody was nobody was the best doctor in the world for me to see it right you know and so i have to push it with what i had and that was the faith that was the hard work, and that was the passion, and that was my creativity. And I know that every person on earth has that. So when people want to walk one dog, it's absolutely possible, right? It's one dog. If I could do 65 or 40, uh, one person should do one dog. What do you have to do? Believe, work hard, you know, hard work, lead, passion, creativity. I love that. Just one. Because a lot of people, that's all they want. Yeah. Dog people, just, I just want to walk my dog off leash. That's their dream. That's their dream. It's like people dream, billions, my people dream to walk a dog off leash, yeah. to be able to go to the beach. It's so funny you mentioned that because one of one of our, one of the members of my, I have a program called Inner Circle. Yes. Uh, and uh, it was it was interesting because every week we, when we speak, I ask them, what are your victories? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of the victories, our, our, our friends, uh, Joel and Victoria said, we walked our dog off leash for the first time. And I, and I thought to myself, that's kind of weird. But they were really excited. Oh my about God! It. For it's dog a people, big deal. Yeah, it's a big for dog people, it's the equivalent of people who want to have a lot of followers on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> or for the money people, it's billions of dollars, you right. know, like whatever. Right. Or for Lewis Hamilton winning again. Right. It's that at that big. It's perspective. Yes. You see it. So really, it, it, simple things can make you that victorious. So for dog people, walking a dog of leash is equivalent to billions yeah yeah and 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 i want to take it to the next level yeah so how did you transition from dog trainer to tv dog whisperer what what was that oh what was that jump so the la times followed me right because they were here it's the mexican guy over there you know univision came and they did a little thing and they followed me to the beach and so the word of mouth word of mouth word of mouth it's no no social media at that time. Right. The phones were this big. Right. <laughs> they were bricks. Right. Right. So then, and then the cameras, you got to do this, take a picture, go to Costco. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's cheaper in Costco and, and reveal the, uh, re reveal, is that the right word? Uh, develop. Uh, develop. Develop, develop the, yep, the yep. pictures. Yeah. So you couldn't, I couldn't, you know, uh, uh, show the world like I, like we do now, right? On, 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 on social media. So, LA Times comes, follow me for three days. And at the end, they say something I never heard before. So how do you see yourself five years from now? See, where I'm from, you can't, the next day is not guaranteed. So to hear for the first time in my life that you can plan your life five years from now was like borderline crazy, but magical. Wow. Right? And that's when I said, I would like to have my own TV show. And she wrote it down, right? No fear. Hey, you ask me what I want. Right. Right. Because by then, people were coming to me and say, help me with my dog. I didn't know that I was rehabilitating. I was just doing what needs to be done. Okay. And so she wrote it down. The, 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 uh, the newspaper comes on a Sunday. Monday is a line of producers outside South Central wanted to find out what the show was all about. And at that time, the Osborns, you know, the family Osborne. Oh, Osborns. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was the that was the the show that, that was, was the big show. That was the big show. Right. And then, of course, everybody was looking for uh, non-scripted television. Right. And so I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying, I would like to have my own TV show. And the pictures are amazing. And you know, I'm being followed by a pack of dogs. What is this show about? And I said, Well, I train people rehabilitate dogs. And I, I, I didn't used to call the dog whisper yet. 
and the title came later. Mm -hmm. I was just a Mexican guy walking a dog, After. a pack of dogs. And, and now I am saying I train people, rehabilitate dogs. Mm -hmm. And that's when I went to, I train people, rehabilitate dogs. I am the dog whisperer. The dog whisperer. Yeah. And that's practically it. Yeah. That's practically it. I didn't hesitate. Um, I did love the part where people say, what would you like to do five years from now? <laughs> that was foreign to me. Foreign. Foreign. Nobody plans five years from now in Sinaloa. Yeah. No one. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, Sinaloa is, you know, very famous for the for the cartel. Yeah. So you're talking people hanging from bridges, yeah. dead, their heads chopped off. Heads everywhere. This yes, is, you go to school place. and you got to jump over a dead person. You're a kid. So yeah. America hides death. Mexico. No, no, no. It's, it's, on, it's on the it's, news. That's it's right. Everything. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that that uh, that's what I grew up. That's why, you know, you, life is not guaranteed. Right. In America, life is guaranteed. Right. He's like, wow, that's a lot of power. Yeah. You know, so you can dream big. Yeah. And that's why outside is the temple of dreams. I love that. You can dream big. Right. In order to you, for us to dream big, feeling safe is number one. Right? You got to feel safe. Yeah. And then after that, that's it. So people in America have no excuse. No excuse. If an immigrant can come and do this in their land, right? And then American people have no excuse. You're safe. <laughs> If you don't feel safe, go over there <laughs> and, yeah. and then come back and say, yes, feel safe. You, you'll feel safe. So we don't, we don't go through our journey without some tough times. Yeah. And I know that you had two in particular. Number one, you went through a divorce. Yes. Like, like I did. Yes. I, I feel like we have a lot in common. Yes. And that's one of the, another one of the things that we had in common, but also I remember watching from afar as a, as a fan. Yeah. I remember seeing that you were no longer calling yourself the dog whisperer. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. I, I'd love to hear how you managed both of those those downtimes. Yeah. Lives. Well, the divorce and the divorce. I tried to commit suicide right after. That that's a big hard time because after that you're dead and and you no longer exist. What What about the divorce made you go failure? Failure. Got it. Yeah, failure and failure and betrayed, right? So those two things uh, really make me believe that killing myself would be a good way to solve the problem. Because again, I'm coming from a place where everything is solved by killing. <laughs> That's all I know, wow. right? That's all I knew. Uh, and or hating, right? So or they kill you or they hate you. That's that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. That's those are the the way you solve problems. Um, so that was it. And then the dog whisper part is uh, the partners that I had at that time uh, play wrong and they, they, didn't, they didn't follow the honorable code and, and the spiritual world. So they literally took, took everything, right? So they took the name and I was supposed to be 50-50, right? Because I practically created the show and the format, is, it, was, it was me. Sure. So I would go to people's home, bring the dog to the, to the center. And then, so the format is not something they create, but they owned it. Mm. Right, so now that you want to do a show, make sure you're on your format. Yeah. Uh, ask me what not yes, to do, yes. Danny. You'll be my coach. Absolutely, Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Please, that's the greatest thing I can I can help people not to do the wrong thing. I, well, I have you and I have Joe. Yeah, oh, Joe Frost. Yeah, she's she's wonderful. Oh. She was. A, that's, uh, that's another one they did that, right? Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she she can't say super nice. Wow. Yeah. So um, so that you know um, I and at that time. I, like, again, I'm not attached to things. So for me, the whisper, I'm Cesar Milan. Let's say you can't take that away. Right. But they also own in my name at one point. Get out of here. Yeah, was, yeah the ex gave it up. <laughs> she gave all the rights. So I have to go. Re, re, that's why I stopped dog whisper. Right. So 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 that way, I, uh, that, in a way, I choked them. Yeah. And then they returned some rights back. Uh, and that's when I that's when I could c come back and do my own show now. Right. But then I learned ownership, control, leadership. Sure. And, and uh, very important <laughs> if you want to have a show. Well, you know, I say this all the time in the midst of pain, you know, you can find a gift. Mm. And, 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 the, and the, it seems like the gift for you was that you learned all of that. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. Oh my, yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, I'm not attached to all the millions they took. I'm not attached to the uh, title they took. I'm not attached to nothing. I just went and did it again. Mm hmm. Right. So, and then I left to Spain and I did a uh, leader of the pack mm -hmm. and obviously I got to meet Spain and it's delicious food. I, I uh, became compadre of, of uh, a great man 
and great family and a beautiful little girl. And we became friends, we became family. So that began the healing. You know, that definitely took the, began the healing. I didn't know that that's what, that's what I was doing because I didn't went to heal myself right after. I, I, I just went back to work. Right, so my family like, in Mexico like, depends like, on me. Yeah, and like the masculine does, we just we just, we just you keep go. going. That's right. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. when we're disconnected from the family. <laughs> yeah, tell me about that. Yeah. Hey guys, before you continue listening, I wanted to introduce you to the sponsor of this episode, Athletic Greens. I decided to give AG One a try because I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great, boosts my energy, and supports my immune system. Uh, especially for someone like myself that fasts all day. I take it in the morning before starting my day and it makes me feel incredible. It makes me feel like I'm doing something good for my body. It also helps me save an enormous amount of time and it makes my life so much easier with just one scoop in the morning. So it makes it a very seamless and easy daily habit for me. Just one serving of this stuff, AG1, supports my long-term gut health. It has 75 high quality vitamins in it, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. So if you're looking for a simple and cost-effective supplement routine, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of their vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So just go to athleticgreens.com backslash Danny. That's athleticgreens.com backslash Danny and go check it out today. So I, I want to talk about that. Yes. Because I wouldn't be here I really feel like we were drawn together through our connection to our feminine side, yes. through our healing journey, yes. and through our work with ayahuasca. Yes. What What was it in your life that that finally said, "I I I need some help. I I, I need to go do something because because this is not working. I I have everything on the outside. Yeah. But something obviously is missing. Well, they keep pushing that uh, my self value, right? So I had a. a a relationship uh, that was pushing my self-value, and that's when that's when I that's that's when I began to start looking in because I was looking outside, you know, what I was giving, what I was, what they were saying. But every time that uh, they they asked me to do something, I did it, and it was not enough. So it began to hurt me, and began to hurt. So what is it that is hurting me, right? And then my self-value. Why why do I feel less and less and less? and less and less and more distance. As, and, and you keep giving and, and, giving, I keep and giving, giving and giving and giving. And I'm getting drained and more drained and more drained and more drained. So as I'm doing this, I'm doing this inside of me. And then that's when I started looking in. And that's when I find out about ayahuasca. You know, Jada, uh, uh, Jada told me about ayahuasca because I went to Scientology. I went to, you name it, everything that was ava available, I went. Because at that time, it's like, okay, uh, you have to work on yourself. And I never work on myself. I work on my dream to become the best doctor in the world. That's myself. But that was easy. That was easy for me. You know, I didn't care how long it would took. I didn't care. I just did it. I didn't, I didn't care if I... I built the business from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week. I didn't care. I was raising kids, and I was learning English, and I was... Uh, uh, learning, you know, uh, the business and everything else. I didn't care. Easy for me is when I started working on me <laughs> that that became so hard, right? Taking the ayahuasca, no problem. I, know, I don't like the flavor, but I, I, I love everything else. Everything else, I just love it. Mm -hmm. Everything. So then you start working as, oh, that's what it is. I have a... Uh, ancestral problem. I said, my mom means sadness. My dad means anger. Right? Okay, I need to heal my relationship with my mom. That's my feminine. My relationship with my dad, that's my masculine. That's what I got it from. That's what I learned. Healthy feminine, health, healthy masculine. I never saw it. Right? So when it was just me by myself, I am an unhealthy person. Right? And that's when I said, wow. So if I don't love myself, how can I love anybody? You know, I love my kids, but I'm also teaching them not to love themselves, right? Because I'm, yes, I love you, but and, I don't feel Energetically, they energetically, feel that. Yes. Yeah, they feel that. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Of course. I had no idea. And as a Latino, well, healing yourself? No. No. Right? You're weak. Right. 
It's weakness. It's a sign of weakness. You should learn. You should do it by yourself. How? I never done it. How can I do it by myself? When we were speaking earlier, you said the, the order for Latinos is, what is it? Your God, God first. God, your mom, mother, second, yes, and then family, family, work, and the last one is you. It's not even. No. It's not even mentioned. No. I mean, yeah. No. No, no, no. And, and, and we see that in women, right? So women is not always in front of the pack, right? She's often in the back of the pack. Yeah. So then female, my female side is in the back of the pack. Mm -hmm. So regardless, right? Regardless, we always see something that should be in the front or priority or healthy in the back. It's us. Yeah. And the, and, the, and the masculine is leading the pack with the wrong energy, with the wrong philosophy and the wrong actions. Yes, it brings money home. But the energy, the philosophy, and the actions is not healthy. And then the female is in the back with the wrong energy, with wrong philosophy, wrong actions. So with the kids, we're in the middle, right? We're in the middle. Yes, I'm a man. That's why I'm supposed to be leading. No, no, no. Only healthy people should lead, right? I say we're the only species that follow unstable leaders. Animals, you will never, they will, you will never be selected to be followed if you're unstable, ever. They push you out of the pack. Or they killed you. <laughs> That's it. So bees, it, it has nothing to do with gender either because in the elephant world is the female, right? With the bisons is the male or the gorillas is the male, right? The ants is the female. The bees is the female. So, but, but what they have in common is the calm, confident energy. That's right. Yeah. Protection direction to the, to the pack. Yeah. So female or male, but you, what you grab the position, but most importantly, grab the energy. And, and, and yet I, I, I love that. And one of the things that I, I loved during our, our, our conversation was that you said, you know, as the man, you're the first one that has to sign up to die. Yes, right. Like, because you're the protector. Yes. Right. So you yes. protect your woman, your children, your. The house. Everything. Everything. Right. You provide, you protect. Right. Yes, sir. And, and, and yet, you know, I think, I think in particular in this culture, it's like the man is disconnected from that confidence that power mm -hmm. that knowledge that being yes you know yes. what do you think that is well we're confused yeah <laughs> you know without a doubt we're confused we need to see a healthy man or we need to have a conversations with man you know and 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 to speak our 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 confusion mm -hmm. uh our disconnections uh we did it wrong Right, because it was a machismo in the beginning, and now, now it's not. No, it's not right, and so now they, we cap, we have come surrender to. Okay, maybe you do it, right? And then we go in the back, right? And then we go way in the back, because like I told you earlier, when I go to people's home, the dynamic of the house is dog, wife, kids, husband. So now the guy is in the back of the pack, and he's miserable, miserable. And then when he try to help, they don't let him. They don't let him. Oh, my husband doesn't do it. Uh, why you don't do it? Because he doesn't let me. And why you listen? Because if I don't, and then there's no sex. You see it? So that's, and then they get manipulated with that. Mm -hmm. Which it happened to me too, right? Sure. It, it happened to me. I, I surrender to maybe they are right, right? Maybe they are right. And it's okay. So I don't want to fight. That's it. I don't want to fight. So what do I do? I flight. That's right. And then I avoid my position in the pack. So I practice flight and, f and avoidance. So I don't fight because then I've been told that I'm too masculine. Mm -hmm. I'm too strong, you know, or I'm wrong. And, and in my case, they use you're Mexican. You're just macho, and, you know, or you're insecure. So it's like, maybe they're wrong. Maybe they're right. I said, maybe they're right. So I start questioning myself. Yeah. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. Maybe, right. maybe, maybe she is right. 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 I started believing, so I went to my spirit. I started believing her, her reality or her perspective about me. And that's it. They just completely, they destroy me. <laughs> they, they, they can destroy you. They can destroy you. No? Yeah. Now you're questioning yourself. Yeah. Who am I? Should I use this part of me? Should I use this part of me? Yeah. Thanks God that I have animals. <laughs> that I can always be me. It's, it's interesting that this is, this is where my passion for ayahuasca comes from because that is my story as well. You know, what I, I was always wrong. I would, you know, yeah, I, I, I was always wrong. Yeah. I, I, I could provide, I can give, I can show up. I could, um, 
I, 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 I could be there for the kid. I, I can do it all. Yeah. But, but you're always the cause of the pain. That's right. And, and, and in reality, no one outside of you could be the cause of the pain. You see? The pain is inside. That's right. That's right. That's so it's, in reality, the person outside of you is just a reflection and a mirror for the pain that you are carrying inside of you that you are disconnected from. That's right. So it's easier to blame the person outside <laughs> of you than to heal. And I say this with grace. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. say this with love because when you get to the root, the root of your story, of your, that's the scariest thing to heal. <laughs> because then you're free after that. Yeah. Yes. 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 And, and the scariest thing to be is free. Yes. Because everything has to die. It has to die. Your world, the world that you've constructed, the world that you've created, it has to die. Yeah. The perspective, yes. the energy, the the way you speak, the way mm -hmm. you look, yes. the way you the way you eat, yes. the way you relate, yes. everything has to die yep. in order for you to be free. Rebirth. That's it. That's right. Uh, you know, so uh, there's a beautiful ritual that we do in Aya uh, with gr Grandfather Fire, you know, and that's when you go offer all your crap, you know, and you mention, my name is Cesar, Cesar Felipe Millán Favela, mi papá se llama Felipe Millán Guillén, mi mamá se llama Maria Teresa Favela Millán, y, y queremos darte esta ofrenda, ya no la queremos. We don't want it anymore. And, and that's, uh, what is fire does, it kills everything. It's, it's, gone. it's, it's, a, it's a ritual, it's a symbol, right? It's, yeah. a, it's a metaphor. Sure. But, but, but uh, it, does not, it does something internally because you're open with the belief that this is going to make it happen, that's right. right? So it's a ritual. So you have to take it very seriously and, and, and you have to surrender to it. So to me, the most important thing that I have learned through this process is how powerful is calm surrender. How powerful. I never saw it that way. I saw it as it's my responsibility to be a man and die for the family if that's what it's need to, right? And I love it. I love that part of me. But what they, what they didn't realize is that I calm surrender to that position. It's not I'm doing it because I'm a man. No, I calm surrender first, mm. right? I calm surrender. I do it willingly. It's my honor, it's my pleasure, it's my responsibility. I don't give it to anybody else, my kids or my woman, nobody, my parents, nothing. It's my responsibility, right? So calm surrender, to me, it has, it has allowed me to let go faster, mm -hmm. learn, right? Because that's the only, the only state of mind that you can do three things. You can learn, you can listen, you can heal. Mm. And calm surrender, stay. Happy go lucky, you can only do happy go lucky and calm confident, direction protection. You can only do things and calm confident. And then calm surrender, you can do three. Mm. So which one is more powerful? Yeah. Calm surrender. Calm surrender. And that's one thing that we males need to understand how powerful is calm surrender. Mm -hmm. That's calm confident is, is a position in the pack, and, and yes, it's amazing. But if you want to heal, calm surrender is your state of mind to master. It's the first one. Is the one we should teach. Yeah. You know, it's the one we should master. Yeah. First, before anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Because that way you can assess and evaluate yourself right away. Absolutely. And reset yourself right away. Or, or if you need information, you immediately go for the right person to to become a student. Yeah. Right. And 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 so that's when you humble yourself, right. you ground yourself. You know, as it's time to come surrender to knowledge. That's right. Uh, and to uh, 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 be allowed to be helped. That's right. You know, that, yeah. that, that, that took a while for me, you know, because I was told a man should never look for help. Right. A man can only help. It's, it's why, you know, you said this, 80% of my clients are women. Yes. 80% of the, the, the people that come to Awaken are women. <laughs> I think men have a hard time with the notion and the idea mm -hmm. that being helped and being taught and being guided mm -hmm. it's like a life hack yeah it, yes it's like wh why would you try to go through life figuring that out on your own yeah when when there's there's people out there who are willing to teach you based off of their lessons that's right yeah that's right uh, for that you need to become surrendered yeah yeah to surrender to it is this open in the mind it's not, it has nothing to do with weakness because in order for a dog to listen to you the dog needs to be in a calm surrender state Right. If he's in a happy go lucky, he wants to play. Yeah. And if he's calm, confident, he's your pack leader. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> you know, so in order for a dog to follow uh, you or listen to you or connect with you, he needs to be in calm surrender. Mm -hmm. That's the first step that you need to achieve. That's why it's important when, when you meet a dog for the first time, no touch, no talk, no eye contact. Keep social distance, wait for the calm surrender, bring the dog in. Second thing you have to do with a dog is walk so he sees that you are going to lead. Third is feeding. He can only eat if he's calm surrender. So those three things are crucial for the connection, communication, relationship. But the first one you do is meeting. So the first thing you do is meet a dog, not walk a dog, not feed a dog. And that's where most people begin the disconnection. It sets the tone for the entire sets the tone Because everybody wants, oh my God, everybody yeah. wants to do an excited meeting. Right. Or a fearful meeting. Right. You see it? Or, 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 or an impulse meeting, like overwhelm. Right. You see it? So, so then, the, then that's it. You for, you, you're disregarding the ritual, the most beautiful ritual that is calm surrender, calm confident, let's, tr let's begin trust, let's begin respect, and then let's love each other. Trust, love respect, that. love. I love that. There's two more things, and, I, and, I, and this is, uh, I think, especially as a man, mm -hmm. our relationship with the most powerful force, you know, for us as a man, the woman. Yes. And, it, you know, um, I know what brought me back to myself was finding the one. Yes. Right? And for you, from what you explained to me, was wanting the approval of this woman. That's right. Right? That's correct. What what did that process do for you, right? Finding yourself, finding your heart, finding your feminine, your yes, but yeah, exactly. Find, finding uh, uh, my value. Yeah. Right. What what do I bring to the table that has nothing to do with money, fame, and power? Right. That's nothing to do with that. Absolutely nothing. Because I thought at one point I shifted. So with animals, I bring natural, simple, profound. With women, I bring money, fame, and power. Right? It's very masculine. Yeah. Right? And the natural, simple, profound is more feminine. It's more caring. It's more connection. It's more getting to know. Sure. You know, more nurturing. Right? So because they start attacking my value, that's how I am. Um, my self-value, uh, that's, that's how I began to start working on. That was the question, no? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's the feeling. I start, I, I, they did the right thing. So whenever somebody is making you feel wrong or going through a wrong thing, that's a perfect time uh, to, to know that that's a sign. Because I rehabilitate aggressive dogs, fearful dogs. So, so every single dog teach me something. So every person that makes you feel fight, flight, avoidance is teaching you something or, or, or as, as the animal in you is telling you, hey, it's time to learn something. Yeah. You see it? Because the, the fight, flight, avoidance comes from the animal. That's it. So don't think it's the heart. Don't think it's the mind. Don't think it's the spirit. That's the animal telling you we have to do something about it. Let's go back to calm, surrender, happy, go lucky, calm, confident. Right? So the fight, flight, avoidance is your animal talking to you. Yeah. So when I was feeling fearful, and avoiding, you know, and sabotaging me, that's the part that she was attacking. She, she, was, she was attacking the very thing that you brought to the table <laughs> because of the energy that you brought that's, it to the table that's right. from. That's that's it. It. I had it. That's it. My insecurity it. was with me that's it. for a long time. It. That, that, it was the mask. Yes. It was the mask you were wearing. Yes, that's right. And that mask can only stay on for so long. That's right. My insecurity, that's my it. confusion, my lack of knowledge, I came with it. And that's one thing we have to surrender, yeah. right? The, that's, that's, that's the beauty when you start seeing that those people who are attacking you are doing you a good favor, right? Obviously, you have to come kind of surrender to that idea or that perspective. Otherwise, you're going to attack them, sure, right? Or you're going to dislike them or, or hate them or, yeah. you know, uh, uh, never finish a relationship where, where you didn't finish come surrender because it will follow you. The energy. The energy will follow the you. The resentment. Will the resentment. Stay. It will. Stay. The guilt. The resentment. All of that will follow you. It's incomplete. Right. It's 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 dirty. It's it's not clean. Right. It has to be beautiful structure, clean or clear. And even if it's a breakup, I, I, I share something with you. So the voice comes to me, and, and for ten years I didn't talk to my ex. For ten years, okay, ten years, I felt this hate in my chest for how she did it, what she did, right? And so I felt, like I said in Culiacan, you learn to kill or hate, okay? So I'm feeling this hate. I'm driving downtown LA 
And the voice can say, go to her house and tell her that you're here to apologize for whatever you did wrong. Oh, like I said, I don't question that. I don't question. She did everything wrong. My head went, <laughs> she did everything wrong. It was her. It was her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was her, right? <laughs> but then I didn't question it. I go straight. I went to, I went to buy uh, carne so we can do carne asada here. And, um, and then I arrived at her house. Obviously, she was not expecting me. Andre was there. He, he was like Son. scared. Yeah, like, Andre. They're going to fight. They're going to. Yes. Yeah. My dad is going to kill my mom or something. Yeah, something. Right? So I knock on the door, her boyfriend comes out, and I say, is Ilusión here? And that's her name. And I say, yeah, I just, want to, I just want to talk to her. And then she comes out, she goes, yeah, I'm here just to tell you that I want to apologize for whatever I did wrong. And as soon as I said that, and I couldn't breathe for 10 years, Danny, for 10 years, I would breathe like this, 10 years. And at the moment I said that, and then I lift my arms and say, I talk to the devil, you know, because I used to call her the devil. <laughs> and, and that was it. I felt free. That was it. And now we're, we're cool. We're good. That was it. I don't care what you did to me. It really doesn't matter. I, I, still, pay, I still pay, you know, uh, what is it called? Uh, alimony. Alimony. I still pay. Yes, right. I still pay. But willingly. Like, total comes to render happy go lucky. Because you know what happens? What happens, especially, you know, if when you, when you have that energy, you, you, you live in this energy of like, you know, you were wronged, right? Yeah. There's, there, there's the, the victim. Yes. And there's that separation. Exactly. And what the universe was source, the source taught me as well the same thing. Just give, even if you were wrong, mm -hmm. right? There, there was, we had this business deal. Yeah, yeah. I made, you know, right. a commitment, so forth and so on. This guy breaks down my business. I'm left with, and I felt, oh my God, but I'm wrong, whatever. And when I finally said, you know what? Abundance doesn't think, it's just, just, yeah. Just surrender to the fact that there's a gift here and you'll figure it out later. Yeah. Everything is good. Everything yeah. is calm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. My first loss of money was 20 million. My second was 21 million. And I went and back and do it again. Yeah, that's You right. know what I mean? So, it, it, so it's a lot of money, but, but what's more important is, is, is that I'm not attached to it. For sure. Right? But I became attached to people hurting me. That's what bothered me. Yeah. That's what really hurt me. So yeah. How can I be okay? Not okay in, a, in, a, in an unhealthy way, right? Be okay. Okay, these people are going to pay their consequences. And they did. They paid the consequences, right? I didn't. I just went back and do it again. I feel super strong, right? I feel clean. I didn't do nothing wrong to people, right? So I'm clean. My consciousness is clean. My spirit is clean. Everything is clean. So I'm very proud of myself because I kept myself clean. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, then, and so that part, the attachments of things, is, is one of the things we have to learn, you know, to attach ourselves to things. Yeah. Final question. Yeah. You told me in your current relationship, you know, you're, you're, you're the woman that you're with. Yeah. And I, and I felt her energy. Yeah. It is beautiful, calm surrender. Yeah. Which I know what it feels like to, to be with a woman in that energy. Yes. But she told you something. She said, when she came to you, yes. I want to give you my calm my surrender. My calm surrender. I'm done being a man. That's right. I'm, she's trying, very successful. Yes, yeah, she's very successful. Right? What did that feel like for you? First of all, I didn't believe that that is even possible. <laughs> Not in America. <laughs> it even existed. I thought I was going to go to Japan or Thailand. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and, and so when, when someone comes to me and says, I want to give you my calm surrender, which is her femininity part, right? I, I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't. But then, but then I did, you know, talk to guys and say, wow, it is real. Yeah. It is real. I just let, I, I got to a point where I just let it go. I just finally let it go, the idea that, uh, that in America, this is possible, right? Because here the women are so drawn to be masculine. To be masculine, yeah. Right? And so how I'm going to achieve it here? So I'm saying, once I retire, then I'm going to go find somebody else, right? In a different country that is it's okay for, for a woman to give you their calm surrender or to love joy or their femininity, however we want to call it. Yeah, right? I was going to go to Colombia, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, you were going to go to Japan. Yeah, I was going to go somewhere, somewhere for the yeah. calm surrender woman, <laughs> you know, or, or this love joy. Listen, right. it, it's, it's nothing to do with uh, machismo here. No, no, no. Uh, it, this has to do with, I just wanted a feminine energy. Because, look, in my work, in my work, you can see the feminine energy practice on the dog, and you can see the masculine energy practice on the husband. 
okay? A split second. The woman see the dog. Oh, my God. The woman see the man. She goes into masculine to the man, and she goes into a fan. So she end up come surrender to the dog, right? 80% of my clients are women. What does that mean? They, they come surrender to the dog. But not to the husband. Not to the husband, right? So when a woman comes to me and says, I want to give you my come surrender, they're like, it's real. It took a long time, but yeah, it's real. It's real. Right? But again, she, she, she said, I'm just tired of practicing the masculine energy. I just, I just don't want to do it anymore. Successful, yes, you're right. To be a successful woman, you have to practice masculine energy. Absolutely. You know, it's, yeah. the world out there is, is just logical. Yeah. Money is logical, right? Let's just say it is. People are corrupt. People are dishonest. Da, 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 and you have to just, you know, just put that face. Especially if you're a good-looking woman, their men are they're gonna go look at you, but they have to feel the energy that they can do business with you, right? That you can give direction, that you can protect yourself. So direction protection is a masculine energy, right? So to do business, you have to protect money and give direction to the money. So direction protection. That's right. Right? It's not love joy. Love joy is once you earned it. Yeah. It's just to make it, it's calm, confident. Yeah. Right? So then she got tired of it. And plus, you know, she raised her kids, so she had to be a mom and a dad at the same time. So she just went too far into the masculine to the point that she came and said, I want to give you my calm surrender. It's like, oh, that's the most beautiful thing I ever heard. It's real. And, it, and, it, and in truth, I think looking back, would you agree that you could have only attracted that once you had the calm surrender? Yeah, yourself. of course, of course, yeah. That's, that's, that's the work, right? That's the, uh, that's the healing, that, that's the part that, uh, uh, I wish I could have started a long time ago, right? Uh, I, I did attract what I wanted in life, right? To be the best doctor in the world. I did attract it, right? I did, and then, I, and then to have a TV show, I attracted to keep my kids alive and, and uh, to keep my kids grounded, I did do it, right? Keep my family healthy in Mexico, I did it, right? So I did a lot, but the part of man and a woman, I didn't work on it. And now that I did, it's like, wow, man, I wish I could have done it a long time ago. Oh, I understand it. That's why it's important to see healthy men, right? We need to see healthy men. How does it look like? We need to see a good role model. You know, a healthy man is someone who is good in his feminine and is good in his masculine. And whatever is needed, that's what he does. And we all have both inside of Yeah, of course. Right. When that's you're right. giving affection to a dog, you're in your feminine. When you're giving direction to a dog, you're in your masculine. Right? That's it. So lead, love, loyalty. That's it. And then you get the three L's. I love it. I love it. Thank you for being here, Steve. Oh, my brother. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for, thank you for, for being here. La, La República Dominicana con México. Yeah. <laughs> Vamos a cambiar a los Latinos y al mundo entero. That's right. We are. And that's it for this week's episode of The Higher Self. Uh, go back and listen to this one a couple of times because this is, this, this, is, this is a big one. This is all about you, your possibility. And um, I think Caesar would agree anything that he can do, you can do as well. So don't limit yourself. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The Higher Self. If you heard something in this week's episode that caused you to think maybe, just maybe, there was a higher potential for your life. Maybe there was a potential to earn and receive financial freedom, to attract the relationship of your dreams, or to improve your health. That's what we specialize in. We help wonderful human beings like yourself to unravel all of the limiting thoughts, feelings, and emotions that you've been living through so that you can finally tap into your life's truest potential. If you'd like to talk more about that, we invite you to join us on Instagram or Facebook and email us the word discover more. And when my team sees that, they will reach out to you, send you the details of how we could help you on your pathway to a life of abundance, fulfillment, and creating the absolute life of your dreams. Message us right now, the words discover more now on Instagram or Facebook, and we'll see you soon.